Oh, by the way, this is the Exist New Podcast. In case this gets posted someplace and goes viral on the internet and people are like, what? Sure, it will. Where'd that, com- <laughs> Where'd that come from? Both sitting there setting up the podcast equipment. I'll start talking to whoever our guest is, and we get into this really good conversation. Yeah. It's probably better than any other part of the podcast. Bo's telling us to shut up and stop talking while he's setting up. All around interesting personality. That's why we had him on. He's not afraid to say what he thinks. In this podcast, we cover a lot of different topics. of everything including the earth is, is going to go like nothing lasts forever so how do we how do we reconcile that some things might seem a little offensive but you just keep in mind it's a point of view and, and that's kind of what we're this podcast is all about well aaron it's uh the internet's a crazy place why is that <laughs> i'll tell you why tell me why though <laughs> Well, uh, we had uh, Terry James on, which I've listened to for a while on the Lex and Terry uh, radio show, actually, the mm-hmm. Lex and Terry Network. And uh, this is Bo, by the way, speaking. This yeah. is the existanew.com podcast. And this is Aaron. Yeah, Aaron. Bo's assistant. <laughs> yeah. In also, the existenew.com Aaron's the bad podcast. cop. I'm the good cop. Right. We try to make it that way. Uh, but anyway, uh, I've listened to Terry for a long time, and uh, he... He actually, a while back, he, he did a guest post for us, which we'll link to uh, beneath this. But uh, he's got some great insight, and he's been, he's been in the business, the radio business, uh, the, inter- the entertainment business, and he, uh, he shares with us a lot of wisdom, not just about what it's like to be in that business, but what it's like to stay a genuine person in that business and what, it, what it's like to follow uh, what you really want to do and, mm-hmm. and just be okay with whatever happens after that and, and not try to become something just because you're chasing down success, which is certainly some of the values that, that we, we talk about. Yeah. And we were just saying earlier that Bo's had a bit of a man crush on Terry for a long time. He used to listen to him on the radio and <laughs> got me into him too. Uh, but we were saying how cool it is and how grateful we are for the fact that we can now sit here and communicate with him and have like this awesome conversation. He's in Seattle, Washington. Yeah. We're here in Portland, Maine, and it was as amazing. As far away as you can get. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. amazing that he was uh, able and willing to join us, and we really are grateful for that. And uh, we think it was an amazing conversation. And if you're kind of wondering what you're, you're doing with yourself right now, you, you're experiencing some kind of a fear or doubt, we really think this is a conversation for you because Terry, um, he's got some experience there and uh, what he says I think is very helpful. Yeah, I think he reframes inspiration in an actual applicable way, a usable yeah. way because a lot of people just read memes all day on Facebook and it doesn't do anything. We talked about this in the last podcast. Right. They become inspired on their couch and they stay on their couch inspired, but they don't take any action. Yeah. Terry actually talks about what he did to take action and, and kind of some of the sacrifices that he made in, in the past, but how they paid off and how they're still paying off. And, and he's really still driven, you know, and, and following that he's not sure where it's going to go, but he knows he's doing what he wants to do. And I think that that's the important message that we, we took away. So, yeah, well, as uh, Bo said in the podcast, he's kind of a big deal. Um, so we're really, really uh, thankful that he took the time to follow us. He's a well-established, he's been a comedian, a writer, and obviously he's most known yeah. for being a nationally syndicated uh, radio talk yeah. show host. Yeah. So uh, we'll, we'll give you some of his, uh, you can follow him at Terry James. That's T E R R Y J A Y M E S. And then of course, Terry is uh, his, his main website in which you can listen to the Terry James alive podcast, which is a great podcast. Mm-hmm. I highly suggest listening to that. That's all obviously on iTunes. Yep. And we'd love it if you'd uh, continue to listen to our podcast as yeah. well. We've had a number of other uh, yeah. great all guests right. and that's the, we're called exist anew. It's exist yeah. And uh, you can uh, check out our podcasts on, uh, on iTunes and uh, you can follow us on Facebook as well and Twitter. Yeah. So, um, We'll just get going with this. This is the existenew.com podcast with Terry James. The Seahawks will get past, San, you know, San Francisco. Oh, man, I know. It's, San Francisco's playing so well, but Seattle is so tough at home. Their, uh, their offense is anemic right now. Yeah. They got no receivers. We'll see what happens. I mean, the only good thing they have going for them is they're playing at, at, at CenturyLink, and it's, it's crazy there. Right, right. Yeah, Patriots, the same thing. You know, I'm, I'm feeling better about them over the last few weeks, but I still have my doubts going into Denver. So yeah. it, it might be San Fran and Denver, and that will bum me out. 
Yeah, I'm not. Next, uh, it's my favorite time are these NFC and AFC championship games. Isn't it awesome? I don't even give a damn about the Super Bowl. These are these are what it's all about. To totally. Me. I agree. I'll let you guys talk about that because I, <laughs> I don't really watch football, so. Yeah, I, uh, I, that's all I got right now. <laughs> cool. I, I think that's good enough. Cause that's, that's pretty much not the topic, but no. Aaron, Aaron couldn't resist. Couldn't. That's cool. So we want to talk about, you know, from looking at, uh, your, your recent career and your career overall and listening to your recent podcasts on Terry James alive, you've definitely, you've kind of talked about sort of a metamorphosis, you know, personally and professionally and, you know, sort of expressing, uh, different sides of yourself. Um, yeah. Can you tell us, like, when did you begin to develop that interest in, you know, more of a, a self-help and, you know, positivity type of realm of thinking? I was having lunch with a guy today who's a big program director and consultant in radio. Mm-hmm. And we were talking about this exact thing. For me, what happened was I've always had this part of me. Mm, right. As a, as a kid, when I started to... I've been very blessed. I have always known what I want to do. Hmm. And when I meet people who don't know what they want to do, I feel sorry for them. Yeah. You know, and it's a weird thing for me to explain because I've always known. I don't know what it's like to be confused about your direction in life. And I've always known. And when I was younger, when all of my friends would go out drinking and partying and everything else, I wouldn't do it. Mm Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, in fact, my latest podcast now with a buddy of mine, James Arnold Taylor, who's the voice of Obi-Wan Kenobi and Fred Flintstone and yeah. all of this stuff, he was my producer at the radio station. And then he ended up doing some stuff for me. I got him a job in radio. And he and I were these like a track like guys. When everyone else was partying, we were trying to get on stage doing stand up comedy. We would go into a production room and. After I got off the air, I'd go do another radio show. Mm-hmm. Wow. Complete with music and everything. I knew nobody was listening, but <laughs> right. I just wanted to get better. To me, that's what I loved. I got amped out about it. Um, my um, <clears throat> One of the ladies who hired me, that she was this really hot chick, and she was a program <laughs> director. And she said to me, she was leaving, and she said to me, uh, there was a going away party and I was there and I was working midnight to six. Mm-hmm. And she said to me, listen, I kind of think you're cute. I, um, it was like her last day. She goes, I want to spend the night with you. Right. <laughs> yeah. She goes, I've arranged it. So I have someone to work for you. And I said, Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And, and she literally couldn't believe it. And I went into work that night. Like, I don't, I don't want to be with a girl. Fuck this. <laughs> Man, that's hardcore right there. So, so the point is I've always been a real positive, focused guy. Uh-huh. It wasn't until I enjoyed a success, a certain amount of success that we had with Lex and Terry, that I got lazy. Hmm. Hmm. And then now I'm back to it. I am, I'm starting to feel it again. I've, I'm not, I don't know where I'm headed with this. I, I don't think I'm some self-help guru, Mm -hmm. but I do think that I talk to a lot of people in my everyday life that are a lot like me, like you guys, Mm -hmm. you're normal dudes, you watch football, you look at girls, you do all this type of stuff, (laughs) but you want something better. You're interested in other things. And that's exactly where I'm at with this. It's not a metamorphosis. It's really who I've been. Mm. I lost myself which is one of the most painful times in my life, which is supposed to be some of the best time of my life when I was the most successful. And now I'm finding myself again. I'm actually being that guy again. I'm standing taller. I'm starting to work out again. I'm just feeling better about, about stuff. And I have no idea how it happened. Wow. I wow. just, uh, you know, the, the change that Lex and Terry went through our success, making a lot of money, getting a lot of radio stations, the business changing, Mm -hmm. scared the shit out of us. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. For people that really look at how I was treating people, I wasn't an asshole or anything like that, but I, I I just wasn't the real me, you know? And I, I vow for my next success, whether it's with Terry James alive, whether Lex and Terry get a nice big burst again, whatever it is, I vow to never be that person again. Yeah, hmm. I, I think that's important. And for people that don't know, uh, Terry is the the co-host of uh, Lex and Terry, which is a nationally syndicated uh, radio show. And it's uh, I, that's how I actually found Terry is because I was at work 
and I was bored out of my mind. I was working by myself in a cubicle, and I had a, a an old radio, it was just a small radio, and I was going through, and I was looking for 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 different radio. I didn't want to listen to music anymore, so I actually went to the AM side, and I was just listening for anybody to talk because I, I had to hear somebody talk. Mm-hmm. And then as I tune it in, because it was actually tuning it in, um, I, I I heard uh, Terry's voice, and then then I heard Lex's voice, and I heard you guys talking. And I was like, how they're just talking like I like, would talk like to, to my people. friends. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, this is great. And then I was hooked from that moment on. It was on it's on an AM station uh, out of Portland, Maine. So I don't think you guys are on there anymore, but that's how I found you. And then I eventually got an iPhone and got the app and I started listening that way. But uh, no. it, yeah, no, it, we appreciate it. And that's what it's been all along. We've fought consultants. We have fought program directors that said, you need to do this. You need to pre brief here you need to do all these benchmark bits you know you know and we just said no we just want to just be us and that's kind of where i'm going with the terry james alive i'm just being me again and then letting it fly see what happens Mm -hmm. i don't have any i mean i have i have goals and dreams with it Mm -hmm. but i don't have any specific outcome Mm -hmm. and i've learned that when you set your path on something that you want but don't be so attached to the outcome in your mind, like, oh, it's going to be a TV show or, oh, mm-hmm. I'm going to do speaking engagements or whatever it is. When you're so focused on that, it kind of like yeah. shuts you down for any other cool possibilities that might be out there. Right. I agree. Good so time. now I I don't – I go into it full force mm-hmm. knowing what I want to do, knowing what I love, having a big picture in mind. But if it doesn't take that route, I'm not going to beat the hell out of myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You really can't control it. No, you can't. And, but you have to, and you also, if you're so focused on it, you really do close yourself off from a great world out there and something beautiful might happen. I mean, I may end up meeting somebody from my show who ends up saying, Hey, I want you to go ahead and, and be my, uh, corporate guy or whatever the, the yeah. which isn't a skill of mine but i'm just saying right, right. so many things could happen from just doing something you love and putting that forth is is really what it's all about to me and i then not being tied to any outcome keep your eyes open and get ready for a fun ride mm, that's good so it sounds like you're pretty self-driven but are there any people or perhaps different philosophies that have inspired you that you've kind of looked to for for help in the past guidance yeah. guidance yeah well well, sure. I mean, early on, my mom um, was – she was kind of this crazy lady <laughs> for the most part. My brothers and everybody else thought so. I was the youngest. I have brothers that are much, much older than me. I have one who's 68, I think it is, another one who's 67, my sister 66, and then there was me. Oh, wow. And when when my dad died, I was 18 years old. When my mom died, I was 21, I think Jeez. I was. And she was always like, you know, you could, you know, you, you should really, one of the books that she wanted me to read was this book called uh, Illusions by Hmm. Richard Bach. Hmm. And she said, you, and he wrote Jonathan Livingston Siegel. He's this recluse writer. He's amazing. Mm -hmm. And she said, I will pay you $10 to read this book. (laughs) And I took the money, told her I read it and I never read it. Ooh. And after she died, I read it. Uh, and she told me to read it because she said there's a character in this book, Donald Shimoida or whatever it is, that you remind me of. Because I would always question everything with her. Mm-hmm. I got in a big argument with her once because I said I wanted to be German. This is as a little kid. And she goes, <laughs> you can't be German. You're, you're an American. I said, I could be a German if I want to. <laughs> you know? and, and so it's just a, a guy who just – thinks that he could do anything he wants, you right. know, yeah. and I, luckily it's been positive things for me, you know, but so that was a start with me with Liz, reading the Richard box books and it really hit home with me. And one of the first guests I ever had on Terry James alive was Richard Bach. This guy mm, doesn't wow. do any interviews. Wow. wow. None. You can't even find him. I saw him on Twitter <laughs> and he was only on Twitter for like a week <laughs> and his sons <laughs> talked him into it. And I I saw him on Twitter and I said, hey, I do this radio show called Terry James Alive. Would you come on? And I'm laying in bed and I get this message and I'm like, oh, my God, Richard Bach just emailed me. Whoa. 
And this is my idol. I right. mean, you have to understand this guy's a big deal. And, and you guys yeah. are probably much younger than me, so you probably don't know who this guy is. But this is a, a big, big name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I just took that as a message like, oh, my God, I have to keep continuing on with this. Mm -hmm. So my mom always talked about guys like Richard Bach and Dr. Wayne Dyer, who both have been on my Terry James Alive shows. Wow. Yep. Um, and so I, I just find people that I role model. That's mm -hmm. what I've always done. And I've done that through little things in life. Like I chose my friends that way. I didn't go out and hang out with partiers. I hung out with guys who were into sports and, you know, kind of geeks, I guess, and mm -hmm. were maybe shy. If anybody that knew me in high school that knew what I was doing now, they wouldn't even believe it. Really? Hmm. You know, they just wouldn't believe it. I was a shy guy who just stood at the wall and that was it, you know? And, but so th that's, those are my influences really. And I've, I've always just been interested in why people are successful mm -hmm. and not only successful financially, but successful. They seem successful to me in life. Mm, right. If even today, if I'm sitting like at a Starbucks or something, mm -hmm. And there's an old dude there, maybe in his 70s, who seems to be energetic and seems to just be happy and healthy and at peace. I'm listening to every fucking word that guy says. Right. I mean, that's what I'm attracted to. I guess I'm lucky. I don't go out and search it. It's uh, just in my body that I'm just attracted to good, positive people. Yeah. And that's my motivation. I get motivations, not just from books, but from I'll see two people walking down the street and, and they're laughing and I just smile and I mm. just feel good. And it just kills me. It's really hard to explain. Yeah. Interesting. So, you know, conversely, there's a lot of people that I think are struggling, obviously many, many people, and I'm sure you've had conversations and interactions with those people. Why do you think it is that, you know, for example, the self-help industry is just so huge? Like, why do we live in an era? What's happening where people need so much inspiration and self-help? you have any thoughts on that? Well, I think it's just because there's so much out there that we always want what we don't have. There's always the yeah. grass is always greener. Yep. There's always the hotter girl. There's always the nicer car. Yeah. I mean, I remember when I, um, <clears throat> I, I was living in my car. I lived in my car for a year and a half wow. and, and it wasn't like I was homeless or, and I don't want to paint a picture like that. I was working 10 at night to two in the morning at a radio station Yep. and I didn't need a place to live. I just, and I didn't have any money to get an apartment. So I would take showers at UCSB. I would live in my car and then the next day I'd work all day and I would just practice and love what I was doing. And it right. finally hit me that, wait a minute, you're living in your car, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, I remember saying, one day I'm going to get a Porsche. That's going to be my big goal. Right. Wow. And one day, sure enough, we were living in Dallas. Lex and Terry started kicking ass. And I said to my wife, I want to go get a Porsche. <laughs> and my wife is a gearhead. She says, go do it, dude. You know? <laughs> so I go down the street and I get this Porsche. And I'm driving up to my very first stop sign. And I'm feeling like I'm the shit. I'm having a, what I consider a moment where, hey, this is a defining moment for me. Right. Yeah. You know? And right then this Ferrari pulls up next to me. <laughs> oh. And I went, oh, man, you know, <laughs> one of those things. So yeah. the, and, and that's a long, stupid example of what, the way people look at things. I think right. that was a great example. That actually. Was. So you're always looking for the next best thing. And once I, And I still kind of am that way. Mm -hmm. but I'm trying to learn right now to be in the moment. And I think self-help is a very personal thing. Like religion's a very personal thing. People go to it for different reasons. Yeah. People go to it because of maybe they're, they fucked up a relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People go to it maybe because they had a drug problem or because they just don't know what they want in life and all that kind of stuff. And that is a multi-billion dollar industry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I did a podcast recently that I had to take down because I played regular music in it, which you can't do. Yeah, we found that. And out. so I had to take it down so it no longer exists, although I have it still. And I started slamming the people who put the self in self-help. It bothers me. Oh. Do I want to make a living at this? Absolutely. Do I think I deserve to make a living at it? Sure. Why not? Mm -hmm. But it's not my, my goal. My goal is to hang around people I love and that inspire me. And if I can inspire them, that is just awesome. 
Wow. So I, I, I think that it's a very, very personal reason why people go in and search out self-help. I couldn't get everybody like you, you, I'm sure both of you have different stories of why you're attracted to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's just a very personal thing, but I'm glad it's around. If used powerfully, if used correctly, it could be very powerful. Yeah. I, I, I like what you're saying there because it seems to me you're doing it just for the process of it. You're doing it for the, for the sheer, just because it feels good and it feels right. Whereas, oh, yeah. whereas you get a lot of people out there that are, that are trying to basically hit this. I, I want to have this guest on because that will legitimize me. And that yes. was, you know, basically building a legacy. And you actually brought, it's funny because we did a podcast also on, on legacies and I was just listening to your last podcast mm-hmm. and, uh, you, you brought up legacies and you brought up how you let go of that. You let go of the mm-hmm. whole idea of, of generating a, les- a legacy. And, yeah. and we've always thought that a legacy should be a byproduct of a, a genuine action right. and not a goal in, in, in and of itself. And from yeah. listening to you talk, you seem to echo that. You, that's what you want to do. It feels right. It feels good. It's your success is only because that's what you truly want to do, and, and not because you have something to prove anymore. Is that? Oh no. Well, even Lex and Terry, I, my, our success came there because it's something we love. Mm-hmm. I just knew that if you were very successful at this, you make money at it. Um, but very few people make money in radio. Very few people get to retire from radio. Mm-hmm. I'm probably going to get to be one of those people, you know, and that's pretty amazing yeah. right there in its own. Uh, I, I don't do it for the money part, but here's the worst part is there is a business to it. Yeah. If you, and I have a friend who works at a major publishing company and she handles a lot of these people that, and it's, a, it, I'll even say who it is. It's Hay House Publishing. Yeah. And Hay House handles people like Dr. Wayne Dyer. They handle all the self-help people. They are the go-to people, publisher. Hmm. If you want to write a book, you want to go with these guys. Yeah. They put on all the, the talks. They do, they're amazing. They have amazing talent there. But this person said to me, you'd be amazed at some of the egos that I run into, that some of these people need to practice what they preach. Yeah. And that's what I'm having trouble with. Mm-hmm. I'm having trouble right now being like you said, just doing this because out of sheer love, out of sure this is who I want to be around. Yep. I mean, I already know right now after talking to you guys, I'm not going to be able to sleep tonight. <laughs> because I love, I love this stuff. Awesome. I yeah. can't even explain it. It's going to fire me up for the rest, you know, for 24 hours. Yeah. Wow. And, and but that's the way I feel. But it's... If you want to, there is a, there's a reality to making a living off of this. Mm -hmm. And I think that just like with Lex and Terry, when we got successful, I had the choice of being a jerk or, or get lazy or whatever it is. And I kind of got lazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I vow to never let that happen again. And I could see where, where anybody's success, success in any field where they get lazy, they get cocky, they get arrogant. And they make bad decisions, ego-based decisions. Mm-hmm. And I, I vow to never let that happen again. Mm-hmm. So, yes, there is a business side to this. I'm not going to lie. And you have to play the game somewhat. Mm-hmm. But I refuse to play the way some of these guys play. If mm-hmm. my message means I'm only talking to 20 people instead of 200 people, I'll take 20 cool people. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah for sure. That's kind of so, a, yeah, that's definitely that's our the philosophy approach we have. And I'm yeah. glad you said that because we talk about this all the time where, you know, the age of the internet and social media, it kind of allows people to, to, that were already kind of full of shit to be even more full of shit. You know, you can kind of pretend to be stuff. And like you said, I read your post um, about when you reached out to some people as you were just referencing and they kind of, just kind of snubbed you um and you found out you know they're, they're these people these sort of icons and gurus of self-help but they're certainly not practicing what they're preaching and i think you see that on all levels even on the level of you know with, of our involvement with other uh, smaller projects and things like that you, n- you never really know because people can kind of just portray themselves in a completely false way well it's true it's competition yeah and, and when like i talked about gary vaynerchuk who's been on my show he's been on lex and terry he's been on mm-hmm. terry james alive yep. he's a big internet guru guy wrote a really cool book uh, to help people out in their social media world. Mm-hmm. 
And But I know he didn't come on my show because he wanted to. He came on my show because I said, I want to buy 25 of your books and I want to give them to my listeners. That's why he came on my show. The other girl who I mentioned in the in the blog, she actually has contacted me and wants to come on now. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> my wife's like, don't do it, you know, type, type of thing. But right. I love her message. I like what she's doing. Play hard to get. But, well, you know, it's, it's just I want to just, you know, stand by my – yeah, my, yeah, yeah. My balls here, but but you're right. There's the internet allows people to pump themselves up. And mm. radio, there's a term called uh, what is it? Perception is reality. Mm. And there are so many radio shows, and you hear people saying we're the number one station. Yeah, <laughs> and you go, wait a minute, how can there be fifty number one stations <laughs> in my day? Yeah, because <laughs> they all say it. And they find an area where they are number one. Like it's, we got a high rating between uh, kids 12 and 13 years old from <laughs> 30 in the morning to 645 in the morning. Right. And they're allowed to say they're number one. And that's really the way it goes. Yeah. But, but you keep saying it and you keep saying what you are and pounding it into people's heads. They tend to believe it because people aren't going to do their research. Sure. And Unfortunately, that's why you probably, you know, if you guys continue on with this and if I continue on with this, the business reality is going to kick you in the face and you're going to say, wait a minute, I need a publicist. Yeah. But I, I'm, I'm going to put together a team of people that I'm going to be very careful uh, uh, of that. This is going to be the most fun place to work. Yeah. We're going to respect each other, whatever our jobs are. We're going to have a blast and we're going to make a difference and we're all going to get paid. Right. Mm -hmm. But paid is way down the line. Yeah, yeah, of course. You yeah. know, and and so you know, it's that's the thing. There's so many. It's very noisy out there, mm -hmm. and everybody calls themselves a social media guru, a self help person because you can self publish your own book. Yep, yep. Now, all of a sudden, you're a publisher. You know, you're published. It, 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 it's the whole world's changed. But I believe, like you guys do, and I can tell you do, when you remain true to your message, when you may, remain true to yourself. You can't fake that. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, that's why you're going to have instead of, you know, the 20,000 people we talked about and you have the really cool 20 people, those 20 people are going to be invested in you. And besides being invested in you, you're going to be invested in them. Yeah. And it goes both ways with me on the Terry James Alive Facebook page. It's different than the Terry James Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of people on the Terry James Facebook page watch me to post pictures of girls in yoga pants, and I, do, I enjoy doing that. It's fun. But there's the Terry James Alive Facebook page, which over the holidays, they were giving each other gifts. Wow. Yeah. They were giving each other Amazon gift cards. I saw that. Yeah, that's awesome. And, that's amazing. And they, they support one another. And if somebody comes on and trolls, they say, knock this fucker out of here. We don't want him here. Right, right. And it's a small group of people. It's, I don't know, maybe 4,000. I don't even know what I have on there. <laughs> but it's a small group of people compared to what else I have. Right. But it's, but it's a real powerful group of people. I, I think it's good that you bring that up because we one of the things that we wanted to touch on was where do you see this internet connectivity going, you know, with podcasts and, and having these followings and a actually communities. They're, they're not so much followings anymore. Like you said, they're communities. They're people that are giving back to each other. They're They're talking about things. Um, I mean, do, do you see this as it's going to continue to grow or do you think this is kind of a fad or where do you see podcasting and blogs, small blogs in general going? You know, I wish I knew. Otherwise, if I did, I would be on it. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, you want to be set up for that. You want to be the next thing in. Right. You know, you don't want to follow everybody. Right. But much like Twitter, much like Facebook and everything else, I really believe that the cream rises to the top. Mm hmm. And if you've got some sort of skill, some sort of message, people are going to follow you no matter what you end up doing. Hmm. I have a feeling, and I could be a billion percent wrong. I mean, I read things where they say that celebrities aren't even going to be yeah. having television shows anymore. They're just going to have their YouTube page. Yep. They're going to do their own thing. You get wow. advertisement. There are so many options out there. Yeah. And uh, it could go any way. But I do still believe that let's just say your podcast became – really popular, mm -hmm. what? which it should be. I love what you guys are doing. Oh, well, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Let's just say it became really popular. There might be some sort of like, like with my podcast already, 
There's a network called the Empower Network. Yeah. And these guys, uh, it's a network of a bunch of positive talking shows. Most of them are female-based, a lot of uh, spirituality, a lot of psychic things and stuff like that. And they approached me. They said, we want a guy on this thing. Mm -hmm. And this network is now on going to go on iHeartRadio, which nice. they just bought. iHeartRadio has just bought the network. Wow. And I'm going to be on there. I'm awesome. just going to let them have my show that I normally do. Take it. Right. You know, and, and, you know, then you take it from there. But if, if your show becomes popular and gets on these networks, then all of a sudden Oprah likes what you're doing and says, Hey, wait a minute. I want to give you two guys yeah. a, a television show. You're going to wow. take it. Yeah, oh oh you know? yeah. Yeah. Yep. And, and, and that's what, so my point is, is that I think that there's a, a way to make money here. There's a way to make a living. There's a way to do some really good things. <clears throat> There's yeah. a way to meet some really good people and have amazing conversations and add to people's lives in a positive way. Mm -hmm. But it's only going to go so far online. Right. Yeah. You know, like Jerry Seinfeld's show, Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee. Have you seen that? No. I, I've seen clips of that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's awesome. Yeah. Huh. It is. And he's in his third season. Shows are 12 to 15 minutes long. Yeah. It's just him in a car. It's a, it's edited so well. He's in different cars, and they and then they go get a cup of coffee, and they just have these talks like we're having, right. kind yeah. of. Yeah. But it's mainly about comedy. It's a show, and I guarantee you that at some point, if he already hasn't been, but at some point, somebody's going to say, "Hey, Jerry, we want it, we want you to do this show on regular television. Here's another hundred million dollars a month." Right. <laughs> He will take it. Oh, yeah, oh, sure. For sure. But right now, he's not taking it. For one, he doesn't need it. Mm -hmm. Two, he's getting to do a show when he wants to do it. He records them when he wants to do it. There's no hassle. He's got a sponsor that says, do what you want to do, man. So there's the people, the successful people want to be online to kind of like do, get their freedom and say what they want to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But to, to, I, I still think it's all going to go back to television or movies or whatever the heck it is, or even radio. I think there might be a return to radio. Hmm. Yeah, there's something about radio that I, I really do like. Oh, yeah. I, I, I like radio. I do too, and it's paid my bills for many years, but yeah. it's sad to see what the industry's done to yep. itself. Mm -hmm. And they just are, are morons. The, the industry is full of people that are frightened. Mm. And that are just trying to keep their job, which I totally understand. Mm. But when you're afraid, you make bad decisions. Yeah, they're, they're choking it out, basically. Sure. And yeah. and I've made bad decisions when I've been fearful. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going on right now. Nobody knows what's happening. I wish I could predict it. But I still think that I would sit down and watch a television show. Maybe it's because of my age over a online thing. I'm not going to watch something on my cell phone. That's bullshit to me. Right? <laughs> it's too small. You yeah. got to sit there with your headphones. People are still bought. You know. I mean, if I'm on a plane, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But if I'm at home, no fucking way. <laughs> yeah. So Terry, just to kind of to wrap up here, I was thinking about stuff as you were talking about your your change over to the Terry James Alive podcast and the the contrast between those fans and then also the the Terry James Lex and Terry associated fans. Um, I think that people definitely, you know, Bo and I have talked about this. We hide a lot of our true selves from the world, and I'm sure that there's many people listening to this that are thinking like, you know, what I'm doing right now. I'm not living up to my potential. I'm not even acting around others the way I actually really truly am. And it sounds like you're someone that's kind of embraced that. Um, what would you say to someone out there who's kind of feeling that right now, who's sitting there thinking like, man, I'm sitting in this cubicle, this nine to five job or doing something that they really don't like, not being who they want to be, not presenting themselves as who they really are to others. What would you say to that person? I would immediately just try to... Uh, find ways to be inspired every day. Mm. And by that, I, I mean, take a yoga class, take a walk, clear your head. You have to get rid of all the noise around you to be able to hear your true message. Mm -hmm. And once you get that true message, it's real easy to act on. Mm. Um, but you have to just really be able to listen and, and find out what really touches you and what you really love. And like I said, once you, you get that, there's nothing that could stop you. Right. Once you just start taking steps. 
And there really isn't. There's mm-hmm. nothing that could stop you. So, I mean, that that's the thing that I would say. If you're confused, you're sitting in your cubicle and you're, you're, you're miserable, don't th- start thinking about what could be. Just find out, you know, find out who you are first. Mm-hmm. Wow. And when you figure that shit out, you're off and running, man. Right. Yeah. It's, it's There's not... so many ways to skin that one. Yeah. You know, there, you could be, you know, I don't know why people aren't happy. I don't understand it. I've been unhappy, but I just don't get it. Mm-hmm. So that's tough. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, thank you. That was uh, yeah. really insightful. And we, we really appreciate the connection we made with you and appreciate yeah. your time. So guys, I love what you're doing. How can I help you guys? <laughs> well, <Hey. laughs> you you already have. Actually. Yeah. Well, we'll think about that more. We really would like to stay connected and hopefully we can do this again sometime. Um, I'd love it. I'd love it. I'd love it. Yeah. 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 We, we like this a lot. So, I mean, and for people that don't, uh, some people up here because your Lex and Terry isn't carried up here anymore, but, uh, Terry did really, you know, kind of take a chance with us because he's, you know, I, I don't want to blow up his ego, but he, he is kind of a big deal. So <laughs> yes. uh, we, 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 we do appreciate that. Uh, yeah, no, sincerely. Man, we're all in this stuff together and I love your message. I love what you're talking about. I love the, the way you're thinking. And like you said earlier on, you'd be surprised at how many people really do think this way. Mm-hmm. You, I, I don't want to keep going longer. It sounds like you want to wrap oh, up. Oh, no. Do whatever you, you – That was more on your account. So. Yeah, no, not keep... at all. I'm good. But <laughs> okay. one of the things that I've I've noticed is I when I started doing the Terry James Alive thing, I thought for sure that the faithful of Terry, Lex and Terry would go, you stupid idiot. I hate you. Who do you think you are? You know, that type yeah. of stuff. Yeah. And yes, there was that element, and I, I still get it. And I look the other way and just stay strong with doing what I'm doing. There's also people on our show. I'm not going to try to create any controversy or anything that don't like what I'm doing here. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't care. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I, I can, I can do it contractually. I'm not hurting anybody. I'm not. I do all of my jobs well. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm excited about it. So. It's it's a it's a tough position to be in both of these things. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. Maybe you guys could give me some advice on it. I have no <laughs> clue on how to. I'm serious. Yeah. I have no clue how to. You, you know. Luckily, like you, you crossed over and said, "Hey, this is kind of cool." Others yeah. haven't. You know, I I just don't know what to do besides just going on and being me. I guess I don't know. Mm-hmm. No, I, I think that's great. I mean, like you said, you kind of always knew and you've been in this business for so long that I guess maybe having a newer, someone that just kind of made that, that crossover, that, that could be, there could be something valuable in that, in that message to you. I'm not sure if we have anything to offer you, but we'll certainly, uh, no, we'll, we'll stay seriously. in touch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I enjoy it, man. I, I, and you're right. I think that, you know, reigniting that passion that you have. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I guess maybe that's it. And, you know, maybe I could figure out how to do that. Maybe that's my next message for people that's lost their passion. I have no idea. I'm just not going to beat myself up yeah. for it and just keep doing shows, I guess, and having fun. Yeah. yeah. And and I think that's what Bo and I found is that this process of creating the conversation, like we used to sit here and talk to each other about philosophy and health and diet and where did humans come from and how did we used to eat and move and live. And one day we were like, man, we got to just start talking to other people about this. Let's start writing. And so we did. And then we were like, oh, you know what? We should do a podcast and talk about it on there too. And we started doing that too. And really the highlight of this project has been connecting with some amazing people. I mean, we have, yeah. we have some local people here that are just phenomenal experts in, um, you know, ancestral living and wild nutrition and, and just a number of things and professors that we've had from around here that just have given yeah. us amazing insights. And it's really you know, there, there's something that just builds upon just starting to talk and have a meaningful conversation with someone, not just talking about the weather um, so that they know you, all of a sudden that light bulb goes off. And like you said, you realize like, wow, I never really actually talked to that dude before. I never really thought of him that way, but he's thinking about some pretty, pretty deep stuff. And so am I. And now we have that new connection and that's right. been really powerful for us. It almost becomes painful not to do it. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's, you that's a good way to look at it. Yeah. I mean, like you said, what you guys are doing is helping people, you know, you're, you're giving them a new way to look at health, a new way to look at movement, a new like way to look at ourselves as people, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and that's, it's great, man. And, and that's what it's all about, guys. You're yeah. onto something. 
Well, well, we thanks. And, and we'll, we'll definitely, we'll, we'll get this wrapped up here, but once again, we want to just thank you for everything you've done for us in the past yeah, very, the guest very post much. and coming on the podcast and, and, uh, everybody else, uh, Terry James alive podcast that is on iTunes and uh, we're going to do an intro and we're going to introduce you. So we will we'll link up everything. Yeah. And... We won't waste your time. With, well, with it's this. all very, very cool, man. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Well, we'll yeah. be in touch. We'll, uh, yeah, let's do this again for sure. I'd love it. Awesome. All right. Excellent. Thanks again, Terry. Have Thanks very much, Terry. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye.